Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll move on this listener right now in your gentle, loving, powerful, and merciful way as they listen to this message from All Nations Church in Tallahassee. Amen. Thank you for joining us online, and we're partnering. We're, we're mixing our faith together this morning. I've seen cancer disappear. See metal plates dissolve. I know you have some things in your life that's happened to you, and you have the same phrase. Don't you tell me he can't. Don't you tell me he can't. Maybe you're in need of a language change. Maybe you're in need of to see some things happen in your life. And I believe today, throughout this series, we've seen God do some amazing miracles. Thank you so much, worship team. Too good to not believe. I want to stay right here just for a second. Too good to not believe. I just want to take a couple minutes and just begin to think about the goodness of God. It's just think about the goodness of God. Just take a few seconds. Think about it. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you take a few seconds and you position your heart and you start thinking about the goodness of God, then you make him the main idea. Then if everybody in this moment is starting to put him where he belongs, anything and everything can happen. Think about the ways he's been good to you. Just think, take a few seconds. Come on, think about those things. Think about it. Remember we talked, go down the museum of your heart. thinking about those those moments just let thanksgiving begin to rise in her thank you thank you Lord that accident should have been worse but thank you Listen. so many people were in the same situation as me and it could have been worse but you spared that's some of your testimonies you spent. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So many people lost their homes, and this is not me being insensitive during COVID. So many people lost their jobs, but you be somehow became an essential worker. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, but even, I almost lost my, you know, maybe you did lose your job, but you didn't miss a meal. You didn't miss a payment. Or if you did miss a payment, God still provided. You still have your car. You still have food. You still have a, thank you. We're just positioning our hearts. The spirit of thanksgiving. Too good to not believe. You guys can be seated. Oh, too good to not believe. Isn't God phenomenal? I won't even say good. Isn't he phenomenal? Yeah. Thank you all for joining us online. Man, it's my pleasure uh, to be back with you. We're at camp. My body's still at camp. Uh, this, is a, this is a miracle right now, what you're watching. You're witnessing a real live miracle. Well, we have a few testimonies. Is it okay? Can we give you a few testimonies? Yeah. Come on, Alondra, you come first. Um, I found out very quickly, because some of them tes testified at camp, um, and we gave them a couple of minutes, but how many know when you give born again believers, people say, I don't, I don't really speak in public. I can tell, you know. <laughs> Come on, tell them what happened to you. This is Alondra, say hello to her online. Hello. Go ahead. Okay, so before I, want, um, before I give my testimony, I just want to thank God for working in me and for letting me get through so many things that I thought I wasn't, I wasn't never gonna get through he always helped me and he always guided me but I never I was the one that wasn't there 
but he was always there giving me instructions on where to, where to go or how to move, but I was the one that wasn't listening. I wasn't the one that was opening my heart, opening my ears to listen to him. So before I give my testimony, I just wanted to say that and to thank God. Yeah. But um, I want to start by saying, before I walked into camp, um, I was praying a couple days before and I was telling God to work in me and to help me and to open my eyes up to what I need to work on. And he started showing me things and he started telling me things before I went to camp. And then when I went to camp, everything he said to me was just confirmed. And it was, it touched my heart so much because I am a sister of seven. No, actually eight, my bad. Um, so I always feel like I have to be the leader. I always feel like I have to be the second mom. I always feel like I have to be there. And if I, like, if I feel like I failed them, I feel like I'm not good enough. And that God showed me that I am enough and that I have always been enough. And that no matter what I do, he's gonna love me the same that he did before I was born. And until the day that he comes, he has not changed his love for me, and he has always loved me. He's working through me, and I know that God, what he has started, is going to just continue. And I hope that the Lord keeps on using me for good, and that everywhere that I go, I can just minister into people's lives with my testimony. Because I've had a, a hard childhood, but you get to choose what you do with that. And you get to choose how you use that. And I know that everybody that has went through similar things as me, I know that God's gonna use you. Just You just have to let him in your heart and you have to let him speak to you so that when he speaks to you, he can speak through you. I don't know how you just, it's, it's amazing, phenomenal. Come on, David. You ready? Yeah. Here you go, buddy. So, um, before camp, I, I wasn't really close with God. But after camp, I felt like I'd been closer to him than ever. So, I have this testimony I wrote down. So, it, um, it is, when Pastor Isaiah preached on the first night, he talked about how God sees you in his eyes. And not how the eyes of the flesh see you. And that really spoke to me because I've always had a problem on the way I see myself. But I know now that I can't shame myself because I would be shaming God's perfect creation. And then the Bible also states that in Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be wherever you go. And that kind of, and that, and that goes with the other sermon that he's talked about, which is, you can't be afraid to ask for help because you need, if you need help, you can't be afraid to ask for it because God doesn't want you to be afraid no matter what. So asking for help is very important. I've never been able to be, I was never, um, I was never, I've never been able to do that because I've always felt ashamed for asking for help. But you can't be ashamed for asking for help. But um, during that one week at camp, I learned that you can't be ashamed f for asking for help. You can't be ashamed for asking for forgiveness. You can't be ashamed of yourself. So in that one week, I grew closer with friends. I made new ones. I grew closer with God, most importantly. And I can't wait to grow, grow closer with him next year at camp. And I just want to say thank you and God bless you. Yeah. Wow. I've never seen David hug so many people. He was hugging everybody. <laughs> Come on, Savo. Is this okay for you guys to hear? We overcome by this. Let's hear it. So I grew up in a um, family where I was judged by my age. And I'm 15 and basically everybody treats me very horribly. So a week before church, me and my mom got to an argument 
and I was all asking her to just give me respect and with, and treat me how you would treat a, you know your other child and she was like oh I don't care I don't care whatever and she was like oh the grandpa goes to someone whatever like she she was acting like it was just a performance which it wasn't so when I went to camp basically God just came over me and was like I'm here for you when nobody else is and God's gonna make you do stuff. <laughs> so God's gonna make you do stuff that you don't wanna do. And he knows what is best for you because I was not gonna do my testimony at camp because um, I was too nervous and I was too afraid. But God just washed my um, afraidness away, my nervousness away because he knows that it's best for me and it's because I've been having suicidal thoughts and if it wasn't for God, then I would not be here right now. And one day we're all gonna look him in the eyes when he comes back and it's just gonna be a graceful moment to see. Hey, hey. <laughs> Come on, Randy. <laughs> okay, so before camp, I, I remember specifically talking to Christian and Pastor Isaiah about everything that had been going on. And I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to be there. But they were both like, you need to go. It'll be good for you. So I went. In the first night that Pastor Isaiah did his sermon and everything, it just felt like he was speaking to me personally because he was talking about depression and everything that kind of corresponds with it. And, and that night, whenever I talked to him as well, it, it went good. I mean, I've been de just been dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety over the past many years and I've never really talked to anyone about it because I've just been holding everything in. I mean, I don't know why, but <laughs> I've just been feeling like I was there. And the night that meant the most to me at camp was the Wednesday, Wednesday night whenever we did the testimony and worship. I met a girl named Emily and me and a couple of my other friends, we went into a different room and talked to her about everything. And that just made the biggest impact on my life and helped me decide what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be in general. And it just helped a lot because you never know what everyone's going through and it's just crazy how so many people can relate to many things that you have done as well and just being able to make a big impact on her life and a few others that I met at camp just helped a lot. And then Thursday night, whenever we all went to Pastor Isaiah's room, played a few games, me and Bailey stayed back because Pastor Isaiah knew there was something wrong. <laughs> um, so I talked to him for a little bit and then I was like, I know what I wanna do. Like, and I said, I want to do Christian ministries and worship. Yeah. But I didn't tell him this part. I want it to be specifically teens and like kids about to be teenagers because I know that some of them do not have people that are going to be there for them for the most important years of their life which I feel like is the early teenage years because I know I wow. felt alone and it was hard. Wow. Good job. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that part. And if you know Randy, she was just bringing people to, hey, meet this person, meet this person. I'm like, where's Randy? This Randy, God did something amazing. Go ahead, baby. All right, so I am, I'm extremely excited to stand before you guys today, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna go back a little bit, like a month and a half before camp, all right? So a month and a half before camp, I kind of started to um, kind of just become like a shell of myself, started draining myself. I kind of felt like dead inside. 
kind of felt like I was like seriously in a grave. And um, actually at camp, one of the songs the first night was get up out of that grave. And I thought that was enough for God to say to me. I was like, okay, I'm getting out, I promise. But I just kept on looking forward to camp for that reason. And the first night, Pastor Isaiah preached on depression. Now I never came, I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to say like it was a form of depression, but it was, it was me trying to over accomplish and that caused me to drain myself and that did cause a form of depression and I thought that was crazy because I was a happy person loved people I was like there's no way I can be depressed you know but it was God was telling me that night as Pastor Isaiah preached about it he told me that that's what it was but I'm healing you of that tonight and you're getting up out of that grave tonight and all of that but it doesn't it doesn't stop there it doesn't stop there but that is a miracle in itself and um so God just really, that was like the first night and that was really powerful. So I knew God was there. And then the second night we talked on boldness and Pastor Isaiah had me go up and just, um, I talked to the congregation of youth. It was, I've been to youth camps before and it was kind of smaller than I was used to, but that almost made it more powerful. Um, then the next night, so Wednesday night came, and oh, and on Tuesday night, we were praising and worshiping like an hour and a half past the time that the service was held for because the kids were just on fire for God. And the first night, Tuesday, all of the kids were kind of just, you know, like singing along, and then by, er, so Monday, they were just singing along. Tuesday night, they were jumping up and down for an hour and a half past the time. And then whenever Wednesday came, like Randy was talking about, that praise and worship night and the testimony night. As each person was scheduled to do their testimony, they came up, they gave their testimony, and it inspired other teens in the congregation who were just at the altar. And um, they started lining up and there was all these teens who, who were being bold and stepping out of their comfort zone and coming to share their story as well. And as those teens stepped up, they had a lot of the same stories that we had. And that was kind of God telling me, you're not alone. And, and another thing Pastor Isaiah said is that when we're not strong, God's strong for us. And... Um, Something Hennessy shared was the whole, when you're walking, there was the girl who was walking alongside the beach with, um, with Jesus or God, and she's looking at like her lifetime, and it's the pictures of um, her life, and whenever it gets to the hard times, there's only one set of footprints instead of two. And, you know, she was like, why were you not with me in those hard times? Why, you said you would never leave me or forsake me, but, and then God replies with, um, I actually carried you through those hard times and I picked you up when you weren't strong enough and I was there and whenever you were weak and dead and felt empty and felt drained and felt like a shell of yourself, I was there carrying you along the way and I, was, I never left. And um, on Wednesday night, the atmosphere was just incredibly powerful and God told me to open my eyes. This was after, after everyone had already given their testimony, we were all just praising and worshiping, God told me to open my eyes. So I opened my eyes and I look around and I see the entire room just at such a peace and at such like, it, it, was like God, it was God telling me that this is what heaven on earth feels like. An entire room, probably from here to the back of the room this way, and then only as, as big as, like as wide as this, these two panels, but it was an entire room filled and it was like heaven on earth. It was God telling me heaven on earth isn't just something that we say, oh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's something that's a true goal, and it's possible with Christ. And I have, a few, I have a few verses that helped me with that after, but it was God showing me that it is possible, and it's something that we should strive for. Rather than having the earthly concerns, we should have the heavenly concerns to bring heaven to earth, to heal everyone of the, of the feeling dead inside and feeling so pressed and everything. So... I want to share a few of the things, and Simone, you might like one of them because it talks about us having to become children, but I'll do it as I find them, actually. <laughs> but, um, so this one comes from Matthew's chapter 17, and it's titled, Jesus Heals a Demon-Possessed Boy, and it says... You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he healed at it, it he healed at that, he was healed at that moment. 
Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't you drive out, drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you can save, you can Say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So this kind of just explains that all of the things that we're asking God for, we're just like, oh, I hope, you know, I'm praying for you. I hope he's going to do this. God, I really hope you come through. No, God always comes through, and he is always there. Your faith has to be as small as a mustard seed. I'm not even sure how small a mustard seed is, but I'm pretty sure that's the smallest it can, it can be. So if you truly just actually trust and give your heart up to the Lord and you, you really just say, you know what? I'm stepping out of that boat. I'm Peter. I'm stepping out. I know I can walk on the water because you're letting me. I'm walking on the water through you. And, you know, just have that faith because I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we've been praying for in this church. And I am already thanking God for curing and for healing us of those things in this church because my faith is, I mean, I feel like it's way bigger than a mustard seed, but I know it's at least as small as a mustard seed. And I have no doubt in my God. And for him showing me what heaven looked like on earth, I will not stop until the entire earth is having heaven, heaven on earth and they experience that peace and that glory and that joy. So if anything is making you feel dead or doubtful or dry or drained, I just encourage you to give it to God. Just give it to God. You, you pray and you just let it go. You give it away because that weight on our shoulders that I know Alondra was relating to me, I don't know where she is, but Alondra was relating to me. I heard her say it, and she was like, I just felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. And I was like, girl, that's exactly how I felt. And I feel like as Christians, we don't realize, we think that it's just, oh, it's hard for us. We have a hard life. It's all on us. But no, like, us as Christians, we have a lot more in common than we think. And we're not alone. Not only is God with us, but we have each other to fall back on. And we need to start being the church again. We need to start, I'm so tired of this lukewarm Christian stuff. Like, even when we're praise and worshiping, like, we, there's no reason we shouldn't be bouncing off the walls because of the amazing things that he has done in our lives. I know when I was nine years old, when I was nine years old, he did something so huge. And I, I forget about it every day until I look down and see my scar and see like I shouldn't be able to do half of the things that I'm able to do but he let me do it and he let me do it more and more and more and just keeps on reminding me and I mean it's crazy because we we are so hard-headed and we try to push him out and to, and we just try to find our own way but we can't do it by ourselves. and there's so many things even even last night um I was trying to kind of like find some peace because even as I was coming home and you know, when you just kind of put out on the table, like I saw heaven on earth, like, you know, some people are like, uh, I don't know, girl, like, mm, I don't know. But, and they were kind of doubting me in a way. And even coworkers at work were kind of like making fun in a way. And it was just really hard. And I was like, I know people are going to be people. And I know they don't know. And I know it's my job to spread it to them. But it's just really hard whenever people are doubting me. And how am I supposed to change a world if I can't even change like my close people? And um, I texted Pastor Isaiah with that. And he gave me a verse. And it, it just said verbatim of exactly what I was, what I was going through struggling with and it was saying that um the prophecies won't see honor or they will see honor everywhere except for their home or except for in their own country and in their homes and it was almost like exactly the words that I was saying so I just encourage you guys as, as hard as it as it is to keep going and to try to live this life that no one else understands because it almost is like a separate world like camp was heaven on earth and you can't you can't deny that you can't tell me that he didn't do that because the miracles that he put into me that I've seen are so overwhelming that it's just so impossible to like not believe you know and I know that that was that at camp but I want to make that everywhere I want to make that this church I want heaven to be in this church I want heaven to be in my school I want heaven to be in my homes I want heaven to be in the city of Tallahassee and then I want heaven to be in the state of Florida and keep on going and keep on 
on going. On a prayer on a Monday night, um, Pastor Isaiah said that um, Tallahassee, this church, All Nations Church, would be the birth canal of, of Jesus to this entire um, to this entire um, country, United States of America. And um, I am actually seeing it now, which is crazy. And God has given me this, this vision, which is just in- amazing. And not like just like a vision he gives me, but like I'm actually seeing it. Like whenever Pastor Steve went to do the four corners of the United States, and even though he couldn't finish it because of obviously the accident, but, and then as Andrea is being sent to all the way to, um, to Belgium and Africa, and we just have, and even Ruba was in Mexico, obviously for treatment, but she was in Mexico. And it's just our people from all nations being sent out into this world. And as we went to camp, we met so many other youth groups. And I tell you, I am still, I had like, over a scrolling length on my phone of new numbers of people texting me, asking for prayers, asking for encouragement. There's a group, there's group chats of us, people just encouraging, sharing messages, sharing their devotional of the day, sharing their struggles and what, what has faced them even as they went home in these past like two days, Saturday and Sunday. There's people who have been saying that they were different people at camp and they don't know how to be that person again and as they go back into their lives. But I've just been trying to encourage as much as I can and I will not stop until heaven is on earth. So will you guys help me bring heaven to earth, please? Every place that you're in, more than just more than just in this church, because when you walk out of those doors, that's where heaven needs to be more than here. Because that's the place that's hurting. That's the place that is dry, empty, and dead. We need, the, we need to see the life again, and I'm so ready. And another thing, Another thing, I have more scriptures too. There's so much that's on my mind right now, but um, (laughs) so much. Um, Okay, okay, here's the one, Simone, you'll probably love this one. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Um, Before I share this scripture, me and Celine um, were watching one of the kids' sermons so that I can kind of, because after Wednesday night, I was like, I want to bring heaven to earth. And I told Pastor Isaiah, like, I want to do what you do. Like, I want to go. I want to scream it off the top of the rooftops. Like, I don't want anyone to be able to go anywhere and not know Jesus Christ and be saved and everything. And so me and Celine watched this um, kids' service, and even the kids, they were using show and tell as, like, the lesson. And they, were, they had them sculpt this thing out of, um, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's like some bendy string wire. Pipe cleaner, yes, pipe cleaner, yes, a pipe cleaner. They made, they made their creation, and then they had to explain their creation and why and how it exemplified them and God and everything. And um, their message was that you need to show and tell Jesus. And they are elementary school students. I mean, I'm talking kindergarten to fifth grade. And if they can show and tell Jesus, then so can we, and we better be. So... You guys might think that I'm young, but they're even younger, and they're showing telling Jesus. They were on fire for Jesus. So I'm ready to start seeing that little kid in you guys again. And this, this thing says it. It says, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. At the time of the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him and placed the child among them and then said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And this kind of just made me think. I was like, That's so true, God, because as we are children, we're not exposed to the world. And the world loves to distract us and loves to pull us away and all the experiences that we have. And I feel like with each age, we gain experience of the world. And this experience of the world is just creating bad habits. It's creating us to center our minds around Am I, am I the richest? Do I have enough money? Do I have this? Do I have that? Do I have these possessions? Do I have that possession? But, but it's not about that. It's about bringing heaven to earth. It's about bringing God's kingdom to earth again. Because, and whenever people were trying to doubt me, I was trying, and they were trying to justify it by, oh, heaven's separate from earth. And I was like, uh, that's not what God showed me. I was like, um, I'm pretty sure I know what he told me. It was pretty, like, you know, black and white. And, you know, I could tell. And anyways, so this is God kind of saying that, um, I forgot, I lost my train of thought, but 
the children aren't exposed to this world and the world is not, it's not heavenly and we need to make it heavenly. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with that because I feel like I took up a lot of time, but I want you guys to be more than on fire for God. And it shouldn't be the question of, am I making it into his kingdom? Because we know that we are if we accept him into our hearts and we give him thanksgiving. But it should be, why did you put me here? A, a person came up to me after Wednesday night, which was that really powerful night where I feel like heaven was on earth. Well, I know that heaven was on earth and he was showing me. And they came up to me and he was like, I see an angel in you. And that made me think. I was like, if God put us on this earth and he put us on this earth for a reason, aren't we all angels? We need to start viewing ourselves as angels instead of as like Satan's like people to keep on distracting other people. We need to view ourselves as angels and we need to view ourselves as bringing other people to him and to his kingdom and bringing his kingdom to earth. So view yourself as angels and bring he help me bring heaven to earth, okay? All right. Bye guys. Wow. I mean, if that's all you got from it, you can patty cake if you want to. But I think she gave you, I think she gave you a command. She said, will you help me bring heaven on earth? This is not a kid saying, oh, look at my baby. They did a good job. The word of the Lord came for you. I don't know what you're waiting on this morning. You were waiting on a specific word. You were waiting on a specific song. But I'm here to tell you, we have an obligation, that is to bring heaven on earth. You know, Wednesday, I believe it was Wednesday, all my days are completely, completely thrown off. Whatever night we had that night of worship, that night of worship was not in the program. The night of worship wasn't even supposed to happen. You know, our students here um, online, if you have teenagers, if you have young adults, whatever, you're missing it if you're not bringing them to the house of God. Um, our students were a catalyst at that camp to really spark fire. Um, the first night, they were the ones, they were going for it, and you know, they were, people were looking like, well, is this okay to do? And our kids, they were just going for it. So the second night, I'm like, okay, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna help put some gas on this fire. So when they were doing it, I just jumped right in the middle of them. We were just going back crazy. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like a bomb went off in the place. And then after it was over, I don't know where, where where's Haley? Haley's somewhere in here. There's Haley. I'm not going to call you up, Haley. <laughs> Haley was like, can we have a night of worship? I was like, hmm. I'm like, this is not my camp. But I can ask. And because of Haley, and because she was sensitive to what God was doing, that's the only reason we had a night of worship. And from that night of worship came testimony. And it was so many people, like, I saw angels, and, the other, and somebody else was like, I, I heard a whole lot of other people singing. It was like, we were joining in with another song. These were kids. These were kids. Not just our kids. There's a place in the realm of the spirit you can get to where you begin to partner with heaven and you just lay your crowns down and you join in with the song of heaven. I don't know if that excites you, but it sure excited them. That's why it talks about we can never lose our wonder. You have to be like a child and it's just so expectant of your father to do and ex to do exactly what he was gonna say to do. I don't, honestly, I don't even know what else I could even, I think it, I would do her and them injustice by saying anything else. You know, a lot of times I think we come on Sundays and we're looking for something in particular. But the Lord speaks through whomever he chooses. Yeah. Through whomever he chooses. I'll give you this one text and 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 you can just write it down in your heart or on your phone. Uh, it's uh, Joshua chapter 6. Uh, Joshua chapter 6. And um, 
chapter, I mean, chapter six, verse one and two. It says, now Jericho, a fenced in town with high walls, was tightly closed in because of the Israelites. Verse two. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, that was, verse, that was verse one, okay, verse two. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho, its king, mighty man of valor, and into, I, I'll put it into your hands. And if you read along in this chapter, he's telling them the instructions on how to walk into this promise. And, uh, you know, I believe sometimes God can position us next to a miracle but not give us access to it yet. And in the same chapter, he's telling them they were right next to the miracle, but they had to be obedient to what the Spirit of the Lord was telling them in order to walk into that promise. And I think God has given all us, all of us opportunities and are positioning us right next to the miracle in which we're praying for. But there's going to have to be a level of obedience for us to walk into that miracle. Think there's going to have to be a level of obedience for them. They said, "Listen, I give you specific instructions. I need the mighty warriors to go. I need the priests to go. I need this person, and I need you to walk around the walls. But on the seventh day, I need you to do something." He gave them instructions before they were able to subdue what that prophetic promise was. And if you ask me, I think there's a key here. We talked about Thanksgiving. We talked about honoring God. We talking about the secret sauce, what that is. But ultimately, I think when we tap into God's heart, I think the only time that's dedicated to God in a meeting is worship. The word is for us. The offering we get to participate in, but worship is the only thing that honestly ministers to the Lord. You know, we become Levitical priests at that time, and you know, we were back there talking, and Bailey was preaching. Congratulations on your first sermon. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, most don't do their first sermon on a Sunday morning online and in front of a couple hundred people, but well done. And as she was saying, heaven come down, heaven come down, help partner with me to bring heaven. Because literally heaven was in that room at that camp. You tap into that space and you begin to sing the song of the angelic with them. Holy, holy, you begin to sing. Kids were like, what is that other noise? What is that noise? And that is, the, it was just that we were tapping into a place. They didn't have the cares of this world. They didn't have their phones. God bless them. They didn't have anything to distract. It was just focusing on Jesus. And as she was saying, help me bring heaven to earth. I don't know about you, but that's my only goal. I don't know, is that, do you want that to be your, to bring heaven wherever you are, heaven is here colliding in the earth and we start to see movement from the heaven here in the earth and we start to see earth look more like where we're from. We, we start to look, we, we're looking for revival, but revival just doesn't magically happen. Revival is something that we have to become in order to give. And no, on Sundays we come and like, okay, I need something, but I don't have any more for you. Other than I'm giving you instruction. What has the Lord told you to do to access your miracle that you have not done? And I believe in this case, it's just the whole sign of praise and worship. You want to bring heaven and earth? Honor God right here. You want to see heaven come down and do some amazing things? Sing unto the Lord a new song. You want to see earth be disrupted by the power of God? Just keep going after heaven. And I guarantee you, you'll join in with the angels too. Just like Bailey, just like the other kids. You'll join in and you'll see heaven do some amazing things in the earth. Here's a question. How many of you want to see heaven on earth? Yes. This is not an easy ask. We have to tear, we have to toil, but my, the reward for it, the reward to see our city changed, the reward to see our families reconciled, our youth encountering God, you online being back in the presence. There's nothing like being in the presence of people to really go after what God is going after. Let's stand up on our feet. And we're gonna sing this song, and understanding this song, 
spirit break out. Break our walls down. In the same way the walls of Jericho were broken down, they began to walk around. He said, the first time you got to be quiet. Don't say anything. You know those seasons in life where you feel like you can't even talk anyway. You feel like it's just between. You just walk and you declare. But then there are those seasons, and I believe that God has brought us to a seven day today. I believe he's brought us to a seven day where he's declaring, now I want you to start to shout. Now listen to me. I don't want you to just holler. I want you to start shouting and declaring the goodness of God because you know that the wall is about to come down, spirit break out, break our walls down, heaven come down, King Jesus, your name we lifted high, your glory, shaking up the earth and sky revival, we want to see your kingdom here. This is what we're contending for. But online, in the seats, I want you today to be un in a way that you've never done before. You can say, oh, that's those sweet kids, that's great. You can say that and you can stay right where you are. But I guarantee they've tapped into a place that you've been praying for for years to get to. But I believe there's a partnership happening here, the young, the better, I didn't say the other word. <laughs> the young, the old, we're partnering together to see his kingdom come. We need the wisdom, right? We need the wisdom of our elders with the strength of the young and the fire of the Holy Spirit to really seek God do something in the earth. You're here because you're supposed to be here. You're not here to take up a seat. You're not here to be a cheerleader. You're not here to claim a parking spot. You're not here to say, this is my coffee at this time in the morning. You're here to say, God, what shall I do? How will I be a part of your kingdom? What part of the fire am I supposed to start? I am available, Lord. Use me. We want to see your kingdom here. So we're going to sing this song. And I want you to figure out what your wall is and maybe find you a space. This is just for the people who are crazy enough to do it. Maybe find you a space and just begin to walk around that thing. You know, sometimes he takes the foolish thing to confound the what. You sometimes you have to do crazy stuff to get crazy results. Walk around that, and whenever you hit your seventh day and we're declaring this song, I just challenge you to just erupt where you are in the space that you're in. Because I'm telling you, desperate times is calling for desperate worshipers. Come on, somebody. Desperate times is calling for desperate praisers. And I believe that you're in this room and you're online. We all a part of what God is getting ready to do. So Pastor Tom, we're gonna sing this song. Worship team, we're gonna sing this song. And if we sing it right, not the right notes, but in the right heart, in the right posture, Stacy, with the right goal in mind, we're gonna see the Holy Spirit come in and you might walk out of here and say, I heard some other singing going on. I partnered in. I, listen, I'm challenging you right now. Lay your crowns down. Lay your titles down. Lay your challenges down. Lay your worries down. Lay everything down at the feet of Jesus and just focus on him. Can we do that? You can come to the altar if you want. You can stay where you are. Find your spot. Walk around your Jericho. Pastor Tom, come on, worship. We're going to sing a little bit and let's just see what happens. made it to the end of the message and now what is God leading you to make a change are you needing a good church home where you can grow and help others grow as you fulfill your part in the body of Christ then we invite you to join us at all nations church on Sharer Road in Tallahassee a multicultural church founded on the truth of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit our Sunday morning service is at 10 30 and Wednesday night service at 7 plus youth group and kid power and small groups and more. For more information, visit our website, allnationstallahassee.com.